Welcome back. I'm David Bush, and this is Bush History, and this is my ongoing series called The Presidents. I'm doing a short narrative of each of the administrations of each of the presidents in U.S. history. A lot of details will be left out. My other videos cover all the details. This is really a, this is the president, and this is what happened, and any brief discussion I need to clean up some of those details. But take a look at the rest of the Bush history videos if you want more details in depth about the various topics. So now, today, I'm up to the eighth president of the United States, Martin Van Buren, and some people call him Martin Van Ruin. Historians kind of deride him because he got to deal with the, uh, the crap left over after Andrew Jackson left office. The election, the election of 1836, President Martin Van Buren, number eight, his vice president, the fellow by the name of Richard Johnson. Martin Van Buren had been a Democrat. He's following on the heels of a very popular Andrew Jackson, who had also been a Democrat. His term of office is one term, 1837 to 1841. And remember, I've said several times, when you see a one-term president, something unusual occurs. There are some presidents who decided they only wanted one term. But most presidents wanted two terms and didn't get the second one. And that certainly is Martin Van Buren. Who came before him and after him, what were the political parties? Andrew Jackson came before him, and he was a Democrat. After him was William Harrison. He, he was a Whig. Any unusual circumstances surrounding his ascent to the presidency? He was nominated a year ahead of schedule at the Jacksonians' urgings because they feared that the Panic of 1837 and the impending panic of 1837, because people knew it was kind of going to occur, would really interfere with the election. The electors, Van Buren had 170, and William Henry Harrison had 73. The office. Any catchphrases or terms specifically associated with this president? Well, Martin Van Ruin, because of the economic collapse that occurred while he was president of the United States, granted it was set up by Andrew Jackson as he defunded the banks with the whole bank war, but that didn't matter. You couldn't blame Andrew Jackson. People play, blame Martin Van Buren. When he left office, was it by choice defeat, natural death, assassination? He was defeated by William Henry Harrison in 1840. Domestic issues and events. We have the bank panic in 1837, which threw us into a four-year recession because the banks had been defunded. Money had gone into state banks called pet banks, and the federal banking system was largely kaput. We also have the Trail of Tears. Andrew Jackson is blamed for the Indian removals, and there have been other Indian removals, but the most famous is the Cherokees in the Trail of Tears. They've been moved from their ancestral lands in Georgia and Tennessee across the Mississippi River to the Oklahoma Territory, but it actually occurs while Martin Van Buren is President of the United States. Foreign policy. There were all kinds of border disputes with uh, the British and with Canada over exactly where that line is between the United States and Canada that we are all so familiar with. It results in the Webster-Ashburton Treaty, and that's going to take the line of the United, between the United States and Canada from Maine to someplace in the middle of the Great Lakes, and that's kind of as far as we had gotten west anyway. And he also opposed the Texas annexation. Remember, Texas had been part of Mexico. Then it became free. It was the Republic of Texas. Now it wants to be a state in the United States. But the problem with annexing Texas is you're going to throw off the balance of power in the House of Representatives and possibly the Senate as well, because Texas is a strong slave state. So for now, I'm David Bush, and this is Bush History. And next up, we'll take a quick look at William Henry Harrison. Have a good day.